good morning and today we are going to see about the fundamentals of ASIC design and my name is Dr. A. Uday Kumar, Associate Professor, Department of EC from Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology and contents of the ASIC. So first thing, what are ASIC and FPGA design, then difference between ASIC and FPGA, then types of ASICs, then programming, programming technologies then antifuse technology, then statigram technology, then last one is the EEPROM and EEPROM. Uh, next one. Uh, first thing, uh, what are ASIC and FPGA? So, uh, definition for both ASIC and FPGA. ASIC stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuits. In the name itself, it is applications oriented. It cannot be modified for the entire lifetime uh, during the circuit operations. For example, CP inside your phone is an ASIC. It means to function as a CPU for its whole life and it cannot be changed for that. The function or that operating principle cannot be changed for the entire lifetime. The other thing, FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. It is an integrated circuit which can be field programmed to work as per the intended design. It means it can be work as a microprocessor or as an encryption unit or as a graphics card or even all these of three at once. So as implied by the name itself, FPGA is a field programmable and it can be re reprogrammable one. So FPGN is working as a microprocess can be reprogrammable one. Then the difference between ASIC and FPGA as per the operations, as per the applications. The first thing, the FPGA reconfigurable security after the manufacturing. In the case of the ASIC, fixed security for the entire lifetime, it cannot be modified one. The second one, in the case of the FPGA, it is suitable for all the digital designs only. And in case of ASIC, analog and mixed signal security can be fully implemented one. In case of the FPGA, can be purchased as of the shelf products. And in the case of the ASIC, can only be designed as custom private label devices. In the case of the FPGA, low performance efficiencies, higher power consumptions. It consumes higher power. In the case of the ASIC, low power consumption, high performance efficiencies. That's just opposite for that. And the next difference in the case of the FPGA, no non recurring engineering cost. And in the case of the ASIC, NRA costs are a part of the design process because of it is only a fixed lifetime. And in the case of the ASIC, in the next one, difficult to attain high frequency rates. And in the case of the ASIC, operate at high frequency rate is possible one and the next one FPGA faster time to market high per unit cost in the case of the ASIC long time to market lower per unit cost because of the lifetime. The next difference in the case of the ASIC are typically larger than ASICs it can be in the case of the ASIC can be much smaller than the FPGA devices. The next difference in the case of the FPGA Prototyping and validating with the FPGA is easier and in the case of the ASIC just you have to difficult to the process for that. The next difference the final one FPGA lower barrier to entry for the competitors and here the ASIC higher barrier to entry for the competitors and these are the some differences between the ASIC and FPGA. The next one uh, what are the classifications or types of ASICs? The first one, ASIC is classified, is majorly classified into two categories, full custom and semi custom. In the case of the semi custom is, is again classified into standard cell based ASIC, gate array based ASIC, then programmable ASICs. Again the programmable ASIC is, can be further classified into PLDs, programmable logic devices and FPG, field programmable gate arrays. And these are the some types of ASICs. Next see one by one. First thing. What are the different type of programming technologies followed for the ASICs? First thing, as per the types, as per the cat category, uh, first thing is the full custom ASICs. The name itself fully customized one. It includes or it can be manufactured, includes possibly all the logic cells are customized one. Then have all their mask layers are customized. Then full custom ASIC designs makes sense only. Then it offers highest performance and lowest cost. But the expense of the increased design time, complexity and higher design cost and higher risk for the follow-up. Because the, all the 
mask layers are customized one because of this factor only we are increasing the uh, there is increased design time complexity is somewhat increased than other assets for examples high voltage automobile control chips analog and digital communication chips then sensors and some actuators the next one semi custom asics so as per the name itself it is semi customized one so is semi custom as is again classified into further three, cla three classifications first one standard cell based asic or cbic use of the logic blocks from the standard cell libraries and other mega cells then full custom blocks system level macros slms then functional standard blocks and cores or extra etc in the case of the standard cell based asics uh, contents for the cell libraries then get all mask layers are customized then transistors and interconnects is possible then the manufacturing leading time should be around 8 weeks for the production of the semi custom standard cell based asic then it is less efficient in size and performance but lower in design cost compared with the fully customized asic the second category for the semi custom gate array based asic uh, that is the gate array based asic a uh, gate array the, it is called other name it is called the masked gate array or mga it is our pre diffused array uses the macros to reduce the turn around time and compresses a base array made from a base cell or primitive cell these are the three, three types again it is classified into three major classifications the first one channeled gate array then second one channelless gate array and structured gate array so first two categories are named itself the channel and channelless we can form the channels in between the the macros the first one channel gate array and see the diagram so this is the channels so this is the base cells that uh, vertical lines called as the base cells and the first horizontal lines is the one channel and second channel and so on for that so only the interconnect is customized then the interconnect uses predefined spaces between the rows of base cells this is the predefined spaces for the first row and second row then the manufacturing lead time is between 2 days and 2 weeks then gate array based asics the second category second uh, classification is channelless gate array the name itself for the there is no rows only vertical lines all the channels are customized one it is otherwise called that uh, free gate array c of gate arrays sog one only some mask layers are customized the interconnect layers manufacturing lead time is same for the two days and two weeks for the same as for the previous one and the last one is embedded gate array and see the diagram this is the embedded cell this is the array of base cells uh, that is a master slice of master image only the interconnect is customized one custom blocks can be embedded manufacturing lead time is two days and two weeks here that manufacturing lead time is all is common for all the classifications but the structure is different for channel channelless and mask gate array then uh, the next one is the programmable asics the next category uh, that is pl is first first one is the invention is the pl is programmable logic device or the load density devices which contain 1k to the 10k gates the capacity for the gates capacity in the ic and are available in both bipolar and cmos technologies that is pla pal and gal then the next category cpld or fpg fpld or fpgs fpgs are com combined architecture of the gate arrays with the programmability of pld's there is a user configurable one then it contain a regular structures circuit elements such as different types of gates and or nand nor then gates flip flops then multiplexers then ramps and so on for that then it allows for the different programming technologies then allow both matrix and row based architectures then programming technologies the followed for that three programming technologies the first one anti fuse second one static ram then e pro and e pro and see that anti fuse technology for that and this is the e pro then e pro for that then sram technology the first one anti fuse technology it is invented as a standard stanford developed by actel company 
then it is opposite to the regular fuse so it is normally open and it is closed for that it is normally as a open circuit until the programming current is passed that is about 5 milli milli amps then two types it is class between two types then actle free slice a high uh, resistance pole diffusion antifuse then quick logics low resistance metal to metal antifuse technology the two categories for that then it is a direct metal to metal connections higher programming currents reduce the antifuse resistance the drawback only for the antifuse is the unwanted it take long delay for that then otp technology is possible in that case these two are the drawbacks for that then static ram uh, sram cells used for the uh, lookup table for that to implement the particular logic as the two tables then as embedded for the ram blocks for the buffer storage and so on then as control to uh, routing and configuration switches and this is the sram architectures that uses the read and write transistor for that and this is the data for that and this is the back to back the diode connect for that then uh, uh, merits for that allows in system programming then suitable for the reconfigurable hardware then drawback for that volatile and it needs for power for all the time use prom to download the configuration of data then e prom and e prom technology and see that e prom cells is almost small as antifuse and here they using that floating gates that is uh, avalanche mos the fa mos technology used for under the normal voltage transistor is on so the two type of transistors gate number 1 and gate number 2 then with programming voltage is applied we can turn it off to implement the our logic then exposure to uv lamp we can erase the programming use e prom to keep reconfiguration also isp is possible for that so for one thing is one thing one thing is the gate 1 and another thing is the gate 2 one is the floating for that we can erase by using the uv rays and thank you for that and these are the fundamentals of asic design